Ryan here for Encore. This mini-series is dedicated to commentaries about my builds. We're back for another episode, and this time we'll be looking into this SCX24 Model T fire truck that I built in October 2024. This is one of the most challenging builds I've done. Midway into the project, I wasn't sure if I could finish it, but somehow I've managed to. So I want to share this with you because I know that some of you are building something right now. Sometimes we encounter builds that make us want to quit, but what we should always keep in mind is that it takes time, effort, and sometimes ingenuity to create something beautiful. We'll break this down into four parts, chassis and links, body, electronics layout, and the other details. As usual, I'll be discussing each part in a separate chapter. I ordered this Cheatcode 3 chassis from Mass Designs a few weeks after it was released. The reason I got it is the architecture of the chassis, which looks nice and neat with the smooth angles and mounting holes. I also like the adjustable tray, the optional taller magnetic mount, and the optional skid plate angle. I ordered the double bent aluminum links with the chassis and got it in the C-bolt length to be safe, since I didn't know what body to use yet back then. The C-bolt is a versatile wheelbase, so it was the best option I had at that time. I held on to these chassis and links until I figured out what to do with them. Then, I found this Ford Model T Firetruck plastic model kit, and I knew instantly that I wanted it for the cheat code chassis. Once the plastic model kit arrived, I assembled maybe 80% of the entire build with axles and wheels included so I can figure out how to mount the body. The first thing I did was figure out the links. There are three kinds of rod ends and each had a specific use. So assembling these links took a little longer than usual. The rear upper links were hitting the rear magnetic mount because of the rear axle truss that I used. To allow more articulation, I used this optional tall magnetic mount, which was for the front, but I used it at the back. Then the flat rear magnetic mount that came with the chassis, I used it here in front instead. This is the default skid plate that came with the chassis, which has a 15 degree angle but I also ordered the optional 10 degree skid plate which I ended up using here because the medium motor can't be forward mounted with the default 15 degree skid. It's gonna touch this part of the chassis. You might be thinking, then why not get a center mount for the motor? The motor had to be at one side so the driver can sit at the opposite side, which you'll see in a while. Overall, the choice of chassis turned out to be perfect, even if I had no idea what body to use on it at first. When I saw this plastic model kit, I knew that I wanted it for the cheat code chassis, even if I wasn't sure if it can work. I just knew for sure that it's gonna be a little undersized for the chassis, because most 124 scale models are a little small for SCX24. But, as it turns out, the chassis had the perfect length for this body. It made the Model T body look like it was sitting on an oversized truck chassis, which was what I envisioned. Most of the work I've done to accomplish this build went to making the body work for the chassis. It was a challenge to mount, but not only that. It was even more challenging to make the body sit nice and low. So I assembled the main parts of the scale body to figure out how it can be mounted. Then I took it apart to cut and modify some parts. Then reassembled to see if it works. Then taken apart again for painting. Then assembled for the last time together with all the detailed parts. After the first assembly, the body sat too high and looked kinda awful. At this point, 
I also had to carefully decide how far forward or backward the body should go because I can't move the position of the magnetic mounts in the chassis anymore without compromising the performance. So I ended up cutting up the floor of the body to make room for the motor and gearbox to let the body sit as low as possible. The next challenge was to align the body with the magnetic mounts. I had to modify the rear part of the body using styrene board to make the body stiffer and also to accommodate the magnets. For the front mount, I also added styrene layers to hold the magnet. I had to make sure that the front and rear modifications were strong enough for pulling the body away from the magnets. Otherwise, the styrene parts might tear away from the scale body. The hood had to be modified as well to make some headroom for the servo. So the height of the front grille had to be shortened too for that. That's why you can see this cut on the front grille right here at the lower portion. In the original model kit assembly, the headlights are supposed to be mounted on the plastic chassis. That's why it had no place for mounting them here. Then I remembered I had a MoFo RC servo light mount that came with the ugly as fuck chassis I used for my deadbolt. So I looked for it and used it for the headlights. The driver is supposed to sit on the left, but I had to move it to the right side because of the motor. If I used a center mount on the motor, then the driver wouldn't be able to sit on either side because there will be no space on the floor for the pedals. This excess pipe here is supposed to be mounted under the plastic chassis of the scale model. So I just placed it here on the side panel for a more modern and more off-roading look. These canisters were supposed to be placed on the sideboards here, but I moved them to the basket together with the water hose. These water tanks here and the ladder here stayed in their original positions, even this small lamp right here at the back. I was able to make the body sit low, but that created another challenge for me. There was very little space left for the electronics. It got me scratching my head at first, thinking that this isn't doable. This tray can be mounted in opposite ways, either flat or slope. I mounted it flat, and then I moved it as close to the gearbox as possible. Then. I organized the cables and made them fit within this tiny space here beside the gearbox. The ESC had to be on this side. Then the cables of the servo and the ESC passed through below this tray and then connected to the 4-channel receiver on the other side. The ESC filled up this gap in between the body and the side tray on the right side, but now I had to figure out how to do the same for the other side. I couldn't leave the receiver exposed, so I used this fuel tank from my FCX24 power wagon as my receiver box, and thankfully, the fuel tank was at the perfect size. For the battery, this was another challenge. Notice, underneath the body, the side panels are domed and that reduced the space even more. A boxy battery wouldn't fit in here. Even a battery tray or strap won't fit. So I used this small elongated 2S battery because it was the only one that could possibly fit. It had the perfect length, but it's 2mm taller than I need it to be. To mount it, I sandwiched the battery with thick foams, and then I punched a hole on the rear body that's just a little smaller than the battery. That gave it the additional 2mm space it needed and it held down the battery securely. For the axles, I chose Super 8 because it looks clean and simple, which fits the overall design concept. It's also not too wide, which is perfect for this undersized body. For the drive shafts, I ordered a gladiator set 
and thought that it would work based on the measurements. But what I didn't take into account was the 10 degree skid angle. Since the motor leaned forward, it pushed the drive shaft forward. And now, the front drive shaft needs to be shortened by a few millimeters in order to fit. So instead of grinding hard steel, I just replaced this end of the drive shaft with deadbolt. This other half here is still C10 and so far it's working perfectly. For the wheel set, I wanted something oversized. So I chose this 1.3 Endura wheels and Klingon tires, stuffed with silicon inserts. The design of the carbon fiber wheel face that I chose reminds me of early 1900 tires. I painted the wheel face with the same body color for a more coherent look. I also purchased brass rings for these wheels, which I haven't used yet. Right now, the whole setup feels nimble and balanced, but if I'm gonna crawl some steep rocks in the future, these brass rings can come in handy. These tires are 70 millimeters, so it's gonna need a little more weight to get more squish and traction. This build weighs 522 grams with the battery included. It's 55% in front and 45% at the back. Adding brass rings in the front wheels can improve this further. The left and right sides are squarely balanced. That covers it for this episode. You'll see this fire truck take on more challenging lines in the future when I take it on a more rockier terrain. Based on the first crawl I've filmed, I'm pretty confident about how it performs. It's a lion slayer, wearing a beautiful red dress. For the next episode, we'll look into this Mad Max inspired TRX 4M build. It's another two-speed setup, but this time the gearbox comes from FCX24. Again, thanks for watching, and keep rocking! <laughs>